Do you want that? You're going to snort all the way through me talking this. Come on. Just finish this arc. It's part of the, another project that I'm working on. I thought I'd read it to you. So three kinds of dangerous men. So this was inspired by a clip that I saw from um, John Lovett on the Warrior Poet Society, as well as watching Jordan Pearson, a clinical psychiatrist who talks about understanding the darker part of yourself. Right? So, three kinds of dangerous men. There are probably many types of dangerous men. A large number of variables will ensure a variety of personality traits and behaviours. But generally, there are three types to consider. So John Lovett talks about this on his excellent channel, Warrior Poet, as does brilliant Jordan Peterson, clinical psychiatrist and avid writer and lecturer, whom I highly recommend to everyone. Right, so the first type, is the, the type that you'd expect, I'm not going to elaborate too much, but nefarious, so the nefarious criminal. Not necessarily the most physically imposing, nor highly skilled, but could be, but often ruthless nonetheless. Will often victimise those deemed as weaker in some way, be it physically or emotionally. Ambush is often the favoured tactic, followed by a blitzkrieg type of asymmetrical attack that will give little scope for recovery or retaliation. Like I said to you before, what comes from criminality is what works. So this gives uh, like, yeah, very little scope for recovery or retaliation. The what that this type will do in a physical sense will be simple and brutal as well as emotionally rooted. So in other words, this fucker will attack you with hurt and hate. Emotional content will be present. This is really all I'm going to say about this type of uh, individual. So street criminal uh, that likes to violate others. Right? The second type of dangerous man, and what I would say in my opinion is the most dangerous, are weak men. So think of worm-like. In my opinion, this is the most dangerous. Such ilk are often greedy, cowardly, and portray others uh, around them without thought. They tend to go around trashing and hurting other people, whether knowingly or unknowingly, and can be emotionally controlling and often very cruel to their partner, children, partner's children, animals, whatever, those that they can get away with it with. It is of no coincidence that paedophiles and violators of women often skulk around in their existence within this behavioural type. They are often in jobs and positions of power, from the factory floor to the highest and most corrupted levels of world government. Such ilk will often escape all scrutiny, as they seem almost too pitiable to do you any harm. Therefore, they are safeguarded by society, and if challenged, the challenger is often thought and made out to be the bully. They are often spineless, but at the same time narcissistic and full of their own self-importance. Such traits are best demonstrated within the so-called power elite, within the realms of dollar worth and power. You know, the few at the top that have seemingly controlled the masses for way too long. Psychopaths with literally zero compassion for all life forms outside of their own life existence and agenda. But for now, I will leave further elaboration of that for another time and move on. The weak man will say that violence should play no part in life of a good and righteous man. It's a good and righteous, two traits that such ilk could only ever read about because neither exist within them. They may say shit like a good man should never be capable of violence. Just think about the stupidity of that statement for a moment. So a good man, a good righteous man, should never be capable of violence. Well, if a good man is to never be capable of using violence, then how the fuck will they ever be able to protect those they love and must keep safe from the nefarious and dangerously weak men? Clearly they must know violence in order to stop such ilk from ever violating them or theirs, correct? Or else such evildoers would always conquer, would they not?
So a quote now from Julius, Jordan Peterson. A harm, harmless man is not a good man. A good man is a very dangerous man who has it under voluntary control. Sums it up. Nonetheless, this is a kind of cop-out excuse that such ilk will employ in order to hide the fact that the dangerous weak man has no balls or backbone to stand and fight for what is righteous, nor for the greater good. They're just miserable little cowards. I will finish this most important section on dangerous types in terms of information that will allow you to know your enemy with just a couple further points. To be violent or to use violence on another living being is to violate that soul. In old language, that's what it's considered. To use violence or be violent is to violate another. Something that stands against all that the universal natural law stands for or represents. This is the most basic law of life. Everyone should know the difference between right and wrong, good and bad, right? There also exists the laws and God-given rights within natural law, such as the example to your right of self-defense or defense of self, those you love and others around you. There also exists the gift bestowed upon you by your creator, whoever you may think that is, of righteous indignation. Something I've spoke about before. For now, simply know that righteous indignation is the one thing that allows us to stand up and fight, fight for our God-given right not to be violated. Righteous indignation or anger is an essential part of the human psyche purposeful part of our DNA, design, and a gift from our Creator bestowed upon us for times of critical risk to the very self-preservation of our being. Mm -hmm. Therefore, when a good man employs violence in order to stop violation within natural law, the response would not be considered as violent and would instead be referred to as a use of force that needed to be employed in order to stop said violation. Such use of force would always expect it to be proportionate within the realms of reasonable and necessary in terms of the parallel of the threat that you're facing. Nonetheless, it is your right to employ it. Remember, as a good man, you didn't start this and there was no malice nor intention to violate on your part when such an attack or the threat of attack took place. To the good soul, the nefarious and dangerously weak hurt others for reasons that equate to no logic other than they can, and they enjoy it. One analogy is bad people fight because they like to hurt and kill those they hate stood in front of them. Whereas the good man will only ever fight and if necessary kill in order to protect those they love and adore stood behind them. Kind of sums it up really, the necessity to know it. There was a classic quote from Henry Rowlings who said, Bad people kill bad people. Bad people also kill good people. If you want to survive bad people, you have to have some bad in you. Quite a lot, actually. You have to know what they know. And then, the last type of dangerous man. So, nefarious, weak. And now, the good, righteous man. So, also called the hero, if you like. I think that's a bit cheesy, but the good, righteous man. Good men lovingly protect those that they love and what they love with the heart of a lion. They are protectors of nations and homes. Or as John Lovett depicts them, they are the sacred guardians. Only under their shadow can freedom possibly live. You cannot always tell this kind of individual, but they will often have an unmistakable aura about them. And if you are at all perceptive to such things, you'll notice it. People like this are extremely capable, tough as nails in the sense of enduring adversity and physical pain. They display a certain physical and emotional toughness, a gritty quality that suggests that they will endure discomfort and hardship with a smile. They will often become known for having a dark humour, have experienced pain and adversity in their, in their life, which often forges the character to make light and laugh in the face of that that most would bulk or capitulate to. You see this often in men of service to their country, 
also with firemen, paramedics, high level medical consultants or surgeons or anyone else who is familiar with injury, hardship and death. Many non-operational people also have these traits. This would be more of the old school alpha type geezer. Here it would have been uh, cultivated throughout life by our upbringing, taking them through the school of hard knocks. Those of the Beta Soy Boy Brigade who have been socially conditioned over the last several decades will no doubt be offended to such words. To whom I'd like to apologise to absolutely fucking nobody and would say get yourself some big boy pants and get the fuck over it. Old school alpha dominant male hunter gatherer types now sadly lives in the minority in number within comparison to modern day beta male who has been pacified and doled down so as not to become the misfit to the social normal. Again, all part of a much bigger agenda, no doubt, but make no mistake, dulling down the average modern man to beta status has by no means left a shortage of alphas, for they exist vast and thick within the realms of the previously mentioned two types of dangerous men. The primary attribute of a good, capable man is their high skill level, particularly for those who train and virtuously put themselves in harm's way in order to protect others. Such people rise to the occasion under pressure and control their breathing as they focus their intent to what must be done in the coming moments. I will leave you with the analogy of the wolf and the sheep. The wolf will kill the sheep, and so the sheep dog will face the wolf down in order to protect the sheep. So, be the sheep dog, I hear you saying. Fuck no. Be the half breed, half sheepdog, half wolf. Now the sheepdog will understand what is needed to deal with the wolf and will do so with a much higher probability of success. It's much like the spiritual war we're facing right now. There are light workers and there are most certainly dark workers. Then there are grey magicians, those that have studied the dark and know it well, but will stand, fight and die for the light in order to keep it shining. So, just a conclusion on the uh, idea of three types of dangerous man. Uh, all good, essential knowledge for knowing your enemy. Now, of course, you can't generalise people and there's variables for scope. Of course there is. But it's not far off the money. Uh, you know, whether you agree or disagree, do your own research and get in the know. It's 